So my objective in this demonstration is to take a point cloud and turn it into a mesh. So within the process of 3D digitizing um, and the way I teach it to my students is I will have them um, do a clay model. I will scan the clay model for them and then I will have them import um, the 3D data, the point cloud if you will, from the scan into CATIA so they'll be sitting something like this with their point cloud in. So the next step is going to be meshing the point cloud, and the step after that will be creating wireframe geometry, and the final step will be surface modeling. So this demonstration is the showing how to create a mesh. And so I've got a point cloud. I'm going to intentionally do some awkward stuff with this point cloud and meshing just so I can show you some of the tools that are available. Fairly decent point cloud. It could be better. It all is, depends on the scanner you have and the clay model you begin with. So I tell my students, if you want a good mesh, you've got to have a good point cloud. If you want a good point cloud, you've got to have a good clay model and, of course, a good scanner. So, But it, I have what I have here. So I'm going to turn this into a mesh. I have a geometric set I called mesh. Um, so there's some toolbars, and I'll pull them out so you can see them, but there's a mesh toolbar and there's a mesh creation option. So I'm going to do a 3D mesh, uh, select my point cloud, and Katia is going to calculate our neighborhood value, and I'm going to hit apply here. And you're going to see that it should fill in all the holes except for the top and the bottom. So let's, and I'm going to use triangles as well as you can see what happens. So it, the neighborhood value, it looks like is 0.27 something. So it's trying to mesh every hole but it is leaving the top and bottom free, which is what I expected. You can see the triangularization that it's, uh, it doesn't necessarily match the point cloud per se, but it's close. Um, now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to intentionally turn this down just a bit. Let's make it 0.2 and let's just see what happens. So I'm going to do 0.2 and tab, and it makes my neighborhood a little smaller, but I'm trying to get some holes in here so I can show you some other tools from Katia because not all meshes and point clouds would be equal. Let me turn this down to point 0.1. Now you can see some holes coming in. And that's what I want, for, at least for this, just for the demo. Uh, normally, I, it would have been fine to just leave it as it was, uh, but I want to show some uh, things that you can do that... Uh, just in case you don't have a good point cloud and a good mesh. Let me actually turn this up to 0.5. Still not enough holes. Make it 0.125. Trying to get some holes in here so I can work with. Here's one there. I'll go with that. So hit OK. So there's my mesh. I'm going to hide my point cloud. my mesh. I think it ended up with two holes, which are okay. The big top, the big bottom, there's a hole. I think I saw one on the side here. Good. So I got some holes to work with. Uh, just so I can show you some of the tools. And that's the only reason why I decreased that neighborhood values, just to show you some of the, the tools available here. So one thing I like to always do is I will always fall back to this mesh cleaner. And so I'll just show it to you here. I'm going to select the mesh. I want to do an analyze. And what you do not want is essentially what you see up here at the top. And unfortunately, I've got a good mesh, so you're not seeing anything. But non-manifold vertices, non-manifold edges, or edges that essentially are causing problems with your mesh. You may have points that are overlapping with each other. You may have edges that are overlapping or on top of each other. In other words, you may have three points and two of the points are sitting on top of each other. So you've got a triangle between those three points and really it's a triangle between two points. So that could cause problems. So you want to clean up anything you see here. Uh, check it off, hit apply, and let it, let it do its job. You can also uh, adjust the long edges and the small angles in your mesh. I usually don't 
make any changes at this point here. But what you're trying to clean up and what you're going to see a lot of are non-manifold edges and non-manifold vertices and possibly isolated triangles. And those are triangles that are sitting out in space away from the rest of the mesh. So make sure you clean all those up. Uh, maybe in this demonstration I'll get a chance to do that, but who knows. So the next thing I want to do is I want to clean up some of these holes. And there's a hole creation tool. So there's a, it's called fill holes actually. So I can select that and I can select my mesh and it's going to show you uh, where your holes are and it's going to try to fill every place that has a V next to it. And so I have that hole that it's going to fill, which is great. I have that hole, which is going to fill, which is great. I do not want this bottom hole to be filled. So I can just touch that and turn it off and I don't want the top to be filled. And I do want this one to be filled and this other side. One. So that works fine. And you can adjust these values um, up or down here with a hole size to fill in the holes that you want to fill in. But sometimes I feel like it's better just to, to tap them and make it an X. So hit apply and fill those holes in. So that's good. Um, now, another tool I find useful is this. Let me get the name right. It's called interactive triangle creation. So here would be a good example of where to use that. Um, you may want to fill in some triangle areas or expand some areas. So this interactive triangle creation will help. And what you've got to do is you've got to pick edges, the edges of a triangle. And so they have to come uh, and join up with each other. You got to be careful about picking in the background when you do this. So, I'm going to make sure I select there and then there and notice and I hit apply it fills that in so I can find I find that useful at times to do that type of work and maybe somewhere like in here you can really fill in some of these gaps just got to be careful Notice I can keep moving without hit apply, without applying to fill all that in at once. Just make sure you're not picking in the background. So that covers the interactive triangle creation. If you have a good mesh, you don't have to do a lot of that. Um, and I want to do, probably don't really need to do it here, but again, I'm just demoing what you can do if you want to. So I'm going to hit OK there. So I've covered. Um, hole filling and interactive triangle creation. Let me do mesh cleaner one more time just to see what's going on. I was hoping I could come up with a problem, but not yet. Um, now there's a smooth tool and I caution my students to be careful using this. You can see a lot of roughness in my surface. And that's just the nature of what is uh, the mesh that is brought in. If I were to overlay my point cloud, fairly, fairly nice fit. You could probably do a deviation analysis on this and see the difference between my point cloud and my mesh. It would probably be really small now. But if I came in with the mesh smoothing, it's going to smooth out my mesh quite a bit. But while it's doing it, it's also going to cause a deviation between your point cloud and the mesh, which is of course causing deviation between your clay model or whatever model you used in the mesh. And you're going to end up eventually with a shape that isn't even close to what your clay model was. So I don't mind a little bit of smoothing here. I typically just leave it at a coefficient of 0.5. I'm not an expert at using this, but this is just kind of my best practice. And I just touch on it a couple of times just to get a slight smoothing. And then I just do not overwork that because I don't want a lot of deviation uh, between the two, uh, between my original point cloud and the, uh, the mesh that I end up with. So I've got that. Uh, I'm going to stop the mesh smoothing there because I don't really want to... Um, add anything else there. Now, there are some other tools that are useful. And let me hide my point cloud. And let me go to wireframe display. 
So there are some tools that can be useful. Kind of hard for me to see here. Let me, oh, that's a good one. Let me work right here. So there's a tool. This is a different toolbar. This is Mesh Edition. So I can uh, add a point if I wanted to. So what that will allow me to do is add a point. So notice, so I selected the mesh and then what I'm going to do is select on one of these mesh lines and it's going to add a point there. So there you go. Got it to work. Let's try it again. Let's try maybe adding a point here. It will let me. There it goes. There you go. Keep working. Got to select the tool. Okay. Now, so that's adding points. Now you can you can also um, delete points. So let's say I want to take this. Let's say I want to get rid of this point. I can come in with the delete button, the delete option, remove element actually, and notice that point and everything around it is gone. Let's say I would like to remove here. Notice it removes that point and then all the meshes that are around it. So you can also move a point. So let's say I take that point and let's say I move it in the Y just a bit. other direction so I can tweak that to get it moved around I find that to be very very useful so that's the move point so you got add a point you got move point you can delete a point and I don't use these other two I probably should but I don't um, so again just some mesh options to help refine your model now another thing I like to do I'm going to destroy some of the work I just did is I'm going to kind of smooth out these top edges just a bit. So I'm going to go back to kind of a mesh display here. And there is on uh, this cloud operations toolbar, you can work on meshes. So I'm going to do the split tool. And I'm going to sketch a polygon. And what I'm doing is just trimming up the top of my mesh to kind of get a smoother smoother free edge going on so I think that's good now you notice it looks like it's still there but it is really two different meshes now and you can hide the previous one or delete it if you want to but notice that's quite a bit nicer free edge sitting up at the top and let's do that with the bottom so I'll use the split tool and do a, let's do a rectangle on this bottom. And there you go. And then hide the one I don't want, or you can delete it too, I guess. And that gives me a nice free edge at the bottom. Now let's do a mesh cleaner again. Let's see if I get an issue. I don't get an issue. That's too bad. Um, but even though I'm not getting an issue, don't forget to clean your mesh. Um, very, very useful there. So I'm going to go to wireframe. You can see what's happening. And that's, that's not a bad mesh from my perspective. There are some things you can continue to do here if you want to. Uh, one is you can uh, decimate which is just remove triangle count, which might be helpful, or you can optimize. And I don't really need to optimize this, but I'll just talk about the principle here. So if I go in, in into this mesh, now I've got in this current setting, and I'm working in inches, normally I would be working in millimeters, but so notice here I've got uh, 0 0.01 for my minimum length and 0.1 for my maximum length. So that means the triangle, any triangle created will at least have a length of 0 0.01 and 0 0.1, so or somewhere between. And a dihedral angle is the angle between 
uh, the sides of the triangle will not be less than 30. So if I did an analysis here and I didn't apply at these values now, so the maximum length has got to be two times at least the minimum length. So right now it's 0.1. Let me make this 0 0.05 and I'll hit apply. And it's going to give me a little bit of a deviation value, but that's okay. So let me hit okay. And it's going to optimize it. It didn't get a lot of result there, so which is fine. Um, I've had this optimized before and it crashed my system, so just be careful. Let me, I'm going to bump this down to point 0.1 and point 0.02. Then I usually keep my dihedral angle at 30. And let's do an apply. Now you're going to see some calculating going on behind the scenes. And notice um, the triangle count now is quite significant. It's good and it's significant. There's a lot there, uh, but that's more than what I would normally work with, but it's still a good mesh. Um, now, that's the optimize. You can also decimate, and with the decimate, this is another one that you may even want to make sure you save before you do it, is you can just decrease the triangle count. So let's just say I take it down to 50% of what I have here. And this takes a little bit of time as well. And you can see it's a slightly lesser number. So a couple of tools there you may want to think about. It just depends on the point cloud that you bring in and the complexity of your mesh, whether you want to optimize and or uh, decimate. I Let's do a cleaner one last time, even though I don't have anything to clean. At least I can emphasize that you want to make sure you keep your model clean. Um, so that's a mesh. And in order if you want good curves, which means um, you got to have a good mesh. And of course, if you want a good surface, you got to have good curves. So that's my mesh as I'm going to leave it.